Game number four, Reardon versus Jay Sarah at a San Juan Capistrano. Game four of the 13th annual NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV. This broadcast of the NorCal Tip-Off Classic is brought to you in part by Recruiting Boost Athletic College Placement Service. The NCS TV Summer Basketball Camp. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com slash camp to learn more and get your $100 discount off camp tuition. Silicon Valley Sports, SV Sports, LLC.com for more information. Practice timing. Created by coaches for coaches. The Maher Law Group, a professional law corporation. Straight Sports, custom uniforms. Go to straightsports.com for more. Fit Pro Go, most delicious shake ever. And American Asphalt, taking care of business in the Bay Area over 35 years. I'm Chris Babcock here on NorCal Sports TV, and I'm joined by my play-by-play -play partner, Anthony Silva. Welcome, yeah. Anthony. Yeah, thanks, Chris. As it should be two entertaining games. They've both been great. They've all been great from now to earlier. It's been great. Newark Memorial did lose to Grant 58-55, a game you were involved in and calling about. But you even said it, free throws are keys to any game. Most certainly, and it's some of the basic things. And Newark did a good job defensively, but just couldn't quite cash in with the free throws. But tonight for this game, you've got Archbishop Reardon that has unfinished business from last year. They had such a strong start, but only finished 18 and nine. They lost in the opening round of the D1 CIF finals, 68-64. And then they lost in the semifinals to Bellarmine in the open semis of the Central Coast section. So Coach Curtin in his third season, unfinished business. Yeah, unfinished business as coaches always have fire, but Another thing to talk about is how many players are above 6'3 on the court today. There are eight players that are 6'3 and above for Archbishop Rorden with the Crusaders and nine players that are 6'3 and above 
for the J. Sarah Catholic Lions. That is a lot of doors, a lot of foreheads getting hit on top of those doors, right? <laughs> There's some big players here, and you've got a very talented J. Sarah team, 22-8 and eight last year, lost to Brentwood School 63-57 in the southern section second round, coached by Keith Wilkerson, or Wilkinson in his second season, the USC alum, and he's got a lot of talented players specifically Ian Martinez. Yeah, as both coaches are pretty fresh. You talked about Wilkinson. It's his second season coaching, and he was 22-8 and eight last year. A lot of success. They're 1-1 one and one this year. They are coming off that loss to Centennial when they lost 80-67. to 67. And then, of course, on the other side for Archbishop Roy Orton, it's their first game of the year. Do you expect those bugs to come in sooner or later? It's the first game. Well, they'll jump, and there's you got two seven-footers that'll go after it. Reardon in their whites, keys for them, keeping J. Sarah Biggs off the glass, limit the turnovers, and slow down Martinez for J. Sarah. Be aggressive, make more free throws than the other team attempts, have to win the rebounding battle, and take care of the basketball under 10 turnovers. Yes, here we go. The starting lineups were discussed earlier as down inside rebound here they go the Crusaders looking to push the basketball and that's Jelani Clark a commit to Nevada and right on cue the three is short and the ball will be out of bounds and belong to Jay Sarah so you got Jelani Clark 6'3 senior going to Nevada then you've got Bryce Monroe those both those guys averaging over 15 a game last year going to Sam Houston State, and then some bigs, and this is just a, a great veteran team, but they've also got some newcomers. And a three is no good. There's the rebound. Clark, and it rolls right in off a friendly bounce. The Crusaders wearing white jerseys with some gold trim, and then as for Jay Sarah, the black jerseys with red trim as we see aggressive defense right away in a quick foul. So you've got good defense in the backcourt, but then you don't play defense once it crosses half court and Raritan gets caught playing defense with their hands versus their feet and gets called for the early foul. As the ball will be inbounded underneath by Paxton Brazell. And a quick toss and a miss. Rebound. Here come the Crusaders with Clark. The sophomore, Alaldi Morsek with the rebound, 7-1 sophomore. Quite an acquisition. Yeah, as you can see the size, those seven footers gonna be clanging and banging a great pass over the top. And the Crusaders continuing to score quick buckets. Vihola getting good positioning underneath the basket and gets the easy layup, the 6-7 sophomore. As the Crusaders bench jumped up and wanted too many steps and there's those seven footers down low. The touch was a little too strong and a tough rebound over there by Bear. And he's running the rim as well, and he's fouled. So I love when the big guys play great defense down on one side of the court, then sprint the court and are awarded. So he gets the rebound in 23, sprinting hard up the court, gets the basketball, and draws the foul to get a couple of free throws. Yeah, that is a 7-1 sophomore. So <laughs> two more years of basketball after this season. So a lot of development opportunity, but size... To say the least, that's not a problem. They say size never slumps. Okay, Speaking of size, Hugo Clarkin will check in. Seven-footer committed to San Jose State. Not a bad option to bring a seven-footer off the bench. No, not at all. It's sec. Will make the second attempt. And they are up five to nothing as we're just getting started with 6.20 left in the first quarter here at Newark Memorial. And they're continuing to press, and just those deflections allow rhythm on defense. Not a strong catch by Clark. If you get that ball, turn and face the basket and make a solid bounce pass. You can't make that with your shoulders turned away from the person you're going to throw the basketball to. Oh, and there it is. Try shooting it over the seven-footer. No, it's long. Tough rebound inside. Stripped by Clark. And here he goes. Ali Upa tipped. Morsik blocked. But he is fouled. 
as Jasper Lott got called for the foul. He wasn't too pleased with the call, but nonetheless, it's a foul. As Clark turning on the Jets, he was gone right when he caught the rebound in the strip. On the defensive end, I like how Reardon was in defensive position, but didn't try to make the statistic of a block shot. They just wanted the stop. And so often in high school, everybody falls in love with blocking every single shot. You get yourself into foul trouble. If you play good defense, hands up vertical, you don't reach, that is the result. And that's going to keep your best players on the court versus on the bench. Yeah, as Morsek did make the first free throw. He's two for three from the free throw line as of now. And here is his fourth attempt. And it's long. So two for four from the free throw line. And it's early, but free throws are always important in any game. As we see Williams trying to avoid the corners. And, and you know who hasn't touched the ball much, Anthony, is number 22, Ian Martinez, committed to Utah. And we'll see how they can get him involved as well as Bora makes the layup, the up and under. And here come the Crusaders. And an illegal screen. They're really stressing that. Even you look at all levels, NBA, college, those illegal screens are going to get called now, really, no matter what. It's a lost art, and a lot of times it's the fault of the person who's, who is going to be the recipient of the screen. You have to run your opponent, and you have to run into the person who's screening for you and go shoulder to shoulder. When you don't and there's that space in between, go a little Dave Matthews on you, then you're going to reach out and do the elbow, and you're going to be called, and then we're going to get a substitution. I believe we've got... Yeah, Francesco Bora... The 6'11 senior. He'll get, I think he'll, he's bleeding a little bit above his eye, and Mickey will, uh, will go regress him back to Rocky, but he'll get it, uh, a little Band-Aid on that and get back into the basketball game. And here's Williams immediately beating the press and the hand check. Another thing that refs get called, they get taught to call more, is the hand check and the illegal screens. We see both in two consecutive plays. Two times tonight, Reardon is playing defense with their hands. Other times, they've done a good job of getting all feet in the paint and playing vertical and keeping the defense. You can't reach, especially when you have three officials. Anthony, you hardly get away with that at all. At all. There's more second lot, something to pay attention to down low. A tough drive and a little smooch off the backboard and in. A great shot by Martinez. The senior guard finally gets a touch and gets the basket. As Monroe with the ball, very effective score as he tries to look for an opportunity but gets called for the foul. He's averaging over 17 points per game. That was last year, so that's something to build off of heading into this year. And four assists, but Martinez confident in going to the basket. Not afraid of that size as we'll see the inbound hover down low. Looking, looking, no one, great defense to deny any open shooters by Jay Sarah. And I think it helps when you practice against seven footers that when you go against seven footers, it's not a big shock to you. And a three, no, rebound. Monroe, with, Monroe with that miss and not a good offensive possession for Reardon. And speaking of Reardon, they get called again. Those hands, you said it. If they're going to keep calling, if you're going to keep touching them like that, and those hand checks add up. Don't get handsy here at Newark Memorial. These officials are going to call it every single time. As we saw the foul. But also, you have to credit the offense. Williams driving in, forcing them to put their hands on him. you got to move without the basketball. And Martinez with the alley-oop. Yeah, but why Will not Coach three? Wilkinson wanted the foul to no avail. Yeah, and well, fortunate for the Crusaders, they come up with the rebound and the stop, and now here comes Clark with the fancy in and out dribble. A three, and it's good. Right off the gate, maybe this could get the Crusaders back on rolling. They had the five nothing run, they were up five nothing, and after the four points, they get on the board again. Just to delay a game, officials quickly taking control. As Rennie made that three, the 6'9 senior, last year only averaging about five points per game. So it's nice to see him really maximizing his opportunities with minutes. Yeah, we're in a high school game, and a 6'9 guy comes off the bench and hits a three. <laughs> Very abnormal. 
as there's Lott. Look at the left hand. He's fouled. Asserts himself, seals off the defender, and with the jump hook, we'll get a couple of free throws. He has Lott, fancy footwork, great left hook, and he will be rewarded with two free throws. Jay Sarah, number 17 preseason ranked by Cal High Sports. Yeah, they're an accomplished group. Most certainly, and, and I like making it a basketball trip. Yesterday, they were at Stanford, had a practice at Stanford, walked around the campus. Those are the experiences of these road trips that make it memorable and you gel as a unit. This is the tip-off classic, and yeah, I know they've already played a game, but it's kind of your road trip and you build on. And so not only you're a skilled team, but you want to gel as a unit and saw them on Twitter yesterday being at Stanford, and I think that's fantastic. Yeah, it brings unity, and there's an offensive foul. Jay Sarah's defense, look at the bench all clapping. They're pumped. That's a big-time play to get some momentum by Bell. And, and when you see that, that tells me that defense is important to the team. They'll get more excited probably about that charge than they will a dunk that's coming up. And a great lead pass and a cherry on top. That was a, he crushed the cherry. That was a slam dunk. Great play by beating that press. It was open on the backside. Well, they got a little more excited about that, and I get it. But that was built, that position was, possession was built on drawing the charge. Yeah, defense leading to offense. Monroe, it's good. A lot of dribbling, but you'll take it. It's one of your best players. And you see Jay Sarah not wasting any time. They're pushing the tempo real fast. And I know Coach Curtin in Clark and Monroe, the Reardon Crusaders trust. As Chimbambe battling down low with Lott. And a hard jab and drive, and he's fouled. He's I like the aggressiveness of Justin Williams, the point guard, facing the basket, attacking, and get a couple of free throws. That was Martinez's dunk in the prior possession. When you're battling seven footers, Williams is 6'2. He's tall, but in basketball, not so tall. So hanging your body in the air, is that what you teach your younger players, try to seize that contact and get that foul? Well, we kind of talked about it earlier. It's, it's when you practice against big players, you have teammates that are big, you develop confidence, you develop moves, a counter move. So all those things, it helps. It's not often you go against a seven-footer, but when you do every day in practice, it makes the game that much easier. Yeah, it's reared in leading 11 to 8 over Jay Sarah in the first quarter with just above three minutes to go. And another three pointer. Can I get two? No, it's long. Rebound Crusaders. Now Clark driving. Monroe three. It's good again. You can't give Bryce Monroe a wide open look, and that's why Sam Houston State is excited about having that young man. 17 points a game last year and four assists. And a tough Euro step, and you could put that on the tab. That's an and one. Both teams, the tempos are flying up and down. Martinez with great confidence going to the basket. And here's the last made three by Reardon. But Martinez living around the basket, draws the foul, and he'll get free throws. As of now, Reardon doing a great job looking for contact when they go to the basket. As Jay Sarah will now look to see. There's a corner three. Those are always great when they're open. No good. Fight for the rebound. Clark, tough finish, but he missed. And now here they come. Jay Sarah now pushing the ball. There's Martinez again, right in the middle of the floor again, and it's no good. This tempo is very fast. Clark, oh, he shouldn't miss two in a row in the corner. No, he did, rebound. Those open threes, you gotta knock them down sooner or later. Martinez, well, he, hey, if you're not gonna hit open threes, he will, as Jay Sarah now continues to attack. We're knotted up at 14 with two minutes to go in the first quarter. I can go to the basket, and I'm also a very strong three-point shooter. As Martinez. Martinez is not me. I'm horrible at shooting, but Martinez <laughs> showing that ability 
Oh, look at the big fella with that spin to the left hand to the middle and an easy finish for Bora. Bora got a little Band-Aid above the nose, doesn't blink, and Jay Sarah putting together quality possessions and getting stops defensively. Trying to use Viola with the screen with that big body, driving middle. Oh, and he had a look, but he passed it up. And yep, continuing to use them on the perimeter. And the ball's pop ping pong and around and a three, long, very long. Williams looking to push the tempo. No, gets his own rebound and fancy finish and he gets it in. You have three white jerseys that should be buying a ticket and they're watching versus getting their feet inside the paint and defending the goal. And Jay Sarah's got a nice run going here. Yeah, the ball's moving. They're getting great looks, and they're knocking them down. Another shot in the corner, but now he passed it up, and that three is no good. They're living behind the line, and there's not a lot of success right now. As they're trying to pick up. Your senior guards have to take over when you get into these situations and clean up the possessions. Three by Martinez, no good, and a battle for the rebound. And the ref did not call it out of bounds. Kind of letting him play a little bit, and I got no problem with that. Yeah, it's Monroe to Clark, and that will be a travel. And I think if Jelani had had that one all over again, he's going to shoot the layup versus kicking it out. Yeah, as Rennie was the man that was called for the travel. And Jay Sarah, you would think they're playing great, but they're only winning by four. So you have to like the Crusaders on defense, although they've sometimes had some miscommunications. But it, you said it earlier, Anthony, they're living behind the arc. And you can't give up shots close to the basket and just to take a three. So I imagine that at the in between the quarters, that'll be a discussion point in the huddle for Reardon. Jump hook. Yeah, Bora, well, one to the left, one to the right, and that will conclude the first quarter. Bora is a big problem down low, and it's 20 to 14 at the end of the first. Jay Sarah leading by six. You're watching the 2019 NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV presented by Recruiting Boost. Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches through calls, texts, and social media. Contact us today. Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches through calls, texts, and social media. Contact us today. Jay Sarah leads by six, start of the second quarter. Yeah, we'll see the Crusaders, what they have drawn up as they get the first possession on offense. Viola up top. Monroe tried to get a little flare action, but it did not work. And Martinez, it seems the ball has found him and, well, off his shoe. And now finds Monroe, uses his body, and with that scoop with the left hand, he wanted the foul. But he got, most important thing is he got the basket much needed hoop for the Crusaders. And Monroe's a player who played 644 minutes as we have an offensive foul. The illegal screen again. How many times do you think I'll say it today? But 
Monroe has played 644 minutes last year. For a high schooler, that means you're winning, but that's a lot of minutes. Yep. As we see him yet again coming up the floor. Guarded tightly and a hard screen. Viola trying to drive baseline. He gets it. And they're going to step yeah. on the baseline and turned it over. Yeah. And Coach Wilkinson playing his seven footers to start the second quarter. Yeah, as you see, Bora for Jay Sarah had a couple nice hooks, both with his left and right hand. And then you have Morsick, the center for Reardon, the 7 1 sophomore. So they're both in and ready to go. And you even have Lott, who's not a short fella as well. I would imagine we'll see a paint touch here with Bora and Clarkin in in the Twin Towers. <laughs> yeah, the high school version is Williams will now have the basketball and look to set up some type of tempo, the 6'2 senior. And Bora, they want to get him off that roll. You see the high-low could be an option. Hard drive, no. Lot fighting for it. The Morsick said no, he got the rebound. The tempo has still been fast, and there's a foul on Williams, little handsy. Williams called, using his hands on defense, and, and although the officials have kind of let things go under the basket on the perimeter, if you reach in, you're going to get called for the foul. Yes, we have a substitution. On the floor for Jay Sarah, Max Bowman checking in the 5'11 guard. And they're looking for Monroe in the corner. And that's a tough three-pointer, but that's a tough shot. But he's a great player, and he hits it. And now it's a one-point game, 20 to 19, with 6.20 remaining in the first half. And seeing Reardon last year, they'll score points. They'll make their runs. Then things will kind of get away from them, and they gets back to them. Looking for a little more consistency. As now here's the going for the statistic. And when there's nowhere to hide, when you go up and you swing your arm and you go to block the shot, it's going to get called almost every single time. Yes, yeah, there. It could have been on Viola with the body. But yeah, more second, and it looked like a volleyball game. That was a spike, that's for sure. He killed that one. But called for the foul. And already in the game, you've got... A lot of fouls here just with the six-minute mark in the second quarter. Yeah, a lot of free throws will be being shot. And here was that tough three earlier by Monroe. A lot of patience and a lot. I mean, that's not a wide-open look. He's got a hand in his face and makes the play. And the free throw attempt by Williams, that one was long on the second attempt. And look at that lead pass all the way up to Monroe for the layup. What a great pass. Well, these two have played a lot of basketball together. And the full court pass hits in a perfect spot of the court. And a great combination, Clark and Monroe. Working their magic. You're watching the 2019 NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV, presented by Recruiting Boost. Welcome back to Newark Memorial High School here in Newark, California, as Jay Sarah squaring off against Archbishop Reardon. And we see a small light press trying to trap the corners. And he just falls out of bounds. And in, in the press, it doesn't always, I got a turnover there, I get it. But the key, the best presses don't only, not only just get a turnover, they, they force the offense to do something they don't want to do. They're, Played a little faster than they wanted to, and they turned the ball over. Yeah, as we see an alley-oop from Morse. I don't know if it was a floater or an alley-oop. I don't know who will get credited for that. And there's a foul, a bump. Well, that's why we have replay. 
Yeah, we might want to check Did that one Clark out. Did Clark get the field goal there? Yes, here was the alley-oop by Clark. And, yeah, maybe maybe he did touch it. It's hard to say on that angle, but Morsik possibly got those two points. As they're discussing that foul earlier. <laughs> Fifteen team fouls combined, and Martinez will be at the free throw line. 6'3", senior. As Martinez has done a lot of scoring as of now, he makes the first free throw. And now, Reardon leads at 23-22 with 5.46 remaining in the second quarter. These are two teams that have been ranked pretty high in the, in the nation. So winning is contagious in these areas. As Reardon last year was ranked 416th in the nation. So winning, as I said, is contagious. And Jay Sarah ranked 345 last year as Monroe no good. Morsik trying to get the put back. And that ball is flying. And look at the speed of Clark getting the steal and passing it to another leading scorer in Monroe, but he misses the three. As we see Martinez and Williams, those have been the two orchestrators of the offense right on cue, Martinez three. The calm in the storm. Things getting a little out of hand, some sloppy play. And Martinez hits the three with the ultimate confidence. As great pressure defense, a back door by Clark. He lost it a little bit, but Morsik could have went up even closer than that, but instead he tried the little floater, but they are clanging and banging down low, and they're gonna penalize him with a three second violation. It could have been a travel as well. Big fella, you're at the basket about five feet away. Go up and finish there. As Chan not got called for that, the 6'8 senior. But the sophomore will learn. Yeah, Morsik was right by the basket. You would think he'd take a power dribble and there was no one around him and just finish it strong. But as you said, it's a learning process. He's just a sophomore. Don't let the height fool you. And an alley-oop attempt. That was no good. Wow, Martinez tried to get up there. Great box out by Clark to prevent it. Pretty Here good come, defense. Yeah, here come the Crusaders. Hard drive. Try to do the extra pass. Clark will reset. They'll balance up, get some better spacing here, take advantage of their bigs. As not did try to set a screen earlier. Monroe has nowhere to go. Clark now posting up Martinez, and that's a tough right hook. Rebound, Bora. Great defense by Jay Sir. They're moving and getting rebounds. And not trying to block shots, getting positioning. Williams tried the rhythm dribble three. Look at that rebound down low. Jay Sarah keeps the possession alive. Keep Jay Sarah Biggs off the glass. Well, that's fine, but you also got to keep the, the forwards off the glass as well. Yeah. And well, then a five second violation. Yeah, Monroe with And great the Jay defense. Sarah coaching staff is going a little crazy here on the sideline thought that that was called and then they'll get a little bit of a warning of coach Wilkinson keep your assistance on the bench yeah only one coach is allowed to stand up yeah and, and and coach Wilkinson coming down talking to the other official and working officials in a very businesslike manner <laughs> as we see He's communicating to his players as well. He wants them to jump and be active. Monroe with the basketball. Look at the split of the screen and the Euro, but he traveled. That's something that's interesting. You know, when he hangs the ball out there, it's like a gather step. And some refs know, some don't. Either way, that could have been a 50-50 call. But Clark wanted the basketball. He's wide open at the arc. As good as Monroe is, he's only, at least last year, was a 23% three-point shooter. As oh, the big fella fell down, and Bora trying to take advantage well, of the trouble. Well, Anthony, you could say fell down, but Bora did a nice job of kind of helping that get to the ground, <laughs> but didn't finish at the basket. Yeah, as he shuffled his feet, got a little too excited before he could go right up. But yes, yeah, he, he cleared the he cleared the paint, but then didn't finish and called. And it's a three point game here, game four. Here at Newark Memorial. Yeah, as the J. Sarah Lions lead it 26-23 over Archbishop Reardon Crusaders. 
And a tough no as here they come. Here comes Williams and the Lions. Third miss inside the paint for a pretty good look for Reardon. And then they come back and foul. And, and it'll be free throws. Dominic Wilson, the 6'4 senior, got called for the foul. And yet again, it's the hand checking. It's all of those things that are giving Jay Sarah an opportunity to get free points and stop the clock. And I think the officials have done a good job of calling that because it, when you use your hands, you're taking advantage. And when you gain advantage by reaching, the officials are going to consistently call that. As Williams hits the first of two. They're not yet at the one and one as we get some substitutions on the floor. Viola coming back in. Replacing not. And the second attempt is also good. They're making their free throws and it's a guard oriented offense as of now, except when Bora comes in, he's been effective as well. As Monroe trying to set up some tempo as he'll pick a side. He's got the big man on him, but they're moving. Morsick down low, going up strong and finishes. Played that one like a senior. Saw the, the vacancy available down in the low block. Got big, received the basketball, and went up strong. Look at Williams, able to dissect the floor, hang in the air, and that finger rolls nice as well. They have a five-point lead. Monroe trying to respond. Ball popping. Clark, hard baseline drive. No good. Martinez rebound. He's got a teammate ahead. He gives it to Williams instead. No. And Clark, this tempo, it's picks and choose, but it goes as Clark with the end one. With the shoulder shrug, that's like a LeBron shrug, you know? That's telling him, hey, you gotta hit the weight room. There's an and one. Strong move by Jelani Clark. The Nevada commit showed a lot of confidence. Takes the ball, sees the opening, little crossover, and finishes at the basket. Yeah, it's called for that foul was Nolan Bell. Possibly a little body check. So talking to Coach Curtin, our team is talented with a lot of newcomers, but returning all-league senior guards Clark and Monroe are on-court chemistry and gaining big game experience, which with each other is the key. Getting better by the possession. As Williams and Clark, that's a great matchup in the guard spot, and here they are going at it. Trying to attack them off the dribble. Great defense by Clark. Bell back to Clark, his defense, both teams have had their moments of great defense, shot clock under five seconds, and it's a double dribble. That time, you got the Crusaders playing defense with their feet, and they're awarded for it. Create the turnover, and Crusader basketball. Yes, they've been penetrating very well and get into the corner, but it's about hitting those threes for the Crusaders. They've had threes on both sides, but now you see the bench of the Lions standing up. Clark with the ball. That's an NBA three, and it is very short off of Viola, and it'll belong to the Lions. It's, when your bench is into the game, it makes playing basketball that much better. Well, when you're from... Orange County, and you're all the way up here in Northern California, the team that you brought here is all you got. So when you're a, a cohesive unit like that, it helps playing in foreign territory. As Martinez had Clark slip and then goes back to the other side with the cute mid-range jumper. We're under a minute to go, 32-27. The Lions over Reardon. Williams and Martinez have played some great basketball and when the Lions have needed a field goal 22 has been there to answer yeah it's been really nice to see him he's been getting into his rhythm as you you know no player has rushed him even when guys are into him it seems he's playing at his speed and no one else's which is great to see would you agree that he has poise in the noise <laughs> yeah I would I've been waiting to use that one all morning long <laughs> or all afternoon long well, I set you up perfectly then. I'll keep that in mind. Daka. <laughs> As Clark slowing it up, they could one shot. It's about a seven-second shot clock to game clock differential. A tough floater. Morsick tipped it over to his teammate. And Monroe trying to dig to the middle of that floor. Clark, great closeout. I, I like that decision. 
get the last shot, but make it a good shot. Yeah, the shot clock is off, and now we're down to five seconds. Monroe, he's got a shooter on the right side, a tough floater, and he gets bailed out with the foul. Could have been on Bora. We'll see what the official says. And no, the foul call is actually on Ian Martinez. That's a tough one to bail him out. But that shot didn't look like it was going in at all. The veteran sensing situation goes strong to the basket, draws a foul, and he'll get a couple of free throws. He is Monroe, as you said earlier, one of the guards committed to Sam Houston State. Division II basketball, Division Three, Division One. it could be whatever. It's tough to play at any one of those levels. Very tough. And this Reardon team is looking to close out the half, but they have uh, had a lot of close games last year, and they're looking to learn from those situations this year with their veterans that are returning and also developing that chemistry with the new players. As we talked about Martinez so many times, he's a guy being looked at by schools as well. And there's even coaches here on the other side watching quietly, taking their notes as Monroe hits another free throw. Only 1.7 seconds left. A one-handed heave, and that will be the end of the first half. 32-28, the J. Sarah Lions lead the Reardon Crusaders by four points. You're watching the 2019 NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV, presented by Recruiting Boost. Practice timing is created by coaches for coaches. Practice timing helps you create, store, and time your practices. Practices are timed on coaches' phones, in our app, with push notifications to remind coaches of transitions with notes and messaging. The user interface is easy to use with a drag and drop feature, copies practices, stores all previous activities and practices. Never use paper or any other expensive, bulky, hard-to-see timers again. Check out Practice Timing. Check out PracticeTiming.com or email us at info at PracticeTiming.com for further details. Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches through calls, texts, and social media. Contact us today. Do you need an aggressive and persuasive criminal defense attorney in Contra Costa, Solano, or Napa County? 
Contact Vincent R. Maher, attorney at law. You can benefit from the dedicated advocacy of an attorney who's one of the rare criminal trial lawyers in the state to be a specialist certified by the California State Bar. Contact him at 707-427-2800, 707-427-2800. Vincent R. Maher at the Maher Law Group, a professional corporation. Family is one of the most important things in this life. And every family deserves to be happy in a home, just like we are in our home. A house is just walls, but a home is everything and all the life that's lived in between. Practice timing is created by coaches for coaches. Practice timing helps you create, store, and time your practices. Practices are timed on coaches' phones, in our app, with push notifications to remind coaches of transitions with notes and messaging. The user interface is easy to use with a drag and drop feature, copies practices, stores all previous activities and practices. Never use paper or any other expensive, bulky, hard to see timers again. Check out practice timing. Check out practicetiming.com or email us at info at practicetiming.com for further details. Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches through calls, texts, and social media. Contact us today.
Do you need an aggressive and persuasive criminal defense attorney in Contra Costa, Solano, or Napa County? Contact Vincent R. Maher, attorney at law. You can benefit from the dedicated advocacy of an attorney who's one of the rare criminal trial lawyers in the state to be a specialist certified by the California State Bar. Contact him at 707-427-2800, 707-427-2800. Vincent R. Maher at the Maher Law Group, a professional corporation. Family is one of the most important things in this life. And every family deserves to be happy in a home, just like we are in our home. A house is just walls, but a home is everything and all the life that's lived in between. So I think we had a correction at the end of the half. So now the score is 32-29, Jay Sarah. Quality basketball game, fourth game of the NorCal Tip-Off Classic. Yeah, as both teams have been going back and forth, as I'm Anthony Silva with Chris Babcock here in Newark Memorial in Newark, California. The ball is inbounded to start the second half. Jay Sarah Williams now with the basketball. They're going to look to get a bucket here. As both teams are in tough guard oriented, and there's the defense we've been waiting for. As Morse with the block hanging in the air is Monroe. And man, he is so good at doing that. 32 31, Monroe's been shooting a lot of shots and getting baskets. Good defense will lead to easy offense. Here's Jay Sarah, there's Bohr and Morsik. That's the battle we want to see, the seven-footers. And there's a foul on the floor. You could tell Bora, he's crafty with his feet. He can move down there. I like the help by Hubbard, but help in presence versus helping with hands. Because if you're there and he feels your presence, you've done your job. But if you reach, the official's going to call it every time. As Hubbard, the 6'1 junior, now getting a lot more minutes than last year, that's for sure. As Bora down low again, there's that lefty hook. He has that soft touch. And look at him point to his head saying, hey, I'm smart. I'm going to outsmart you. And he's just doing a great job with those feet. Soft touch around the basket. Monroe responds with a tough three-pointer. And here come the floodgates. Shots falling left and right. As it's knotted up at 34 with just under seven minutes to go in the third. As here's Williams with that sidestep jumper, and it's good. The mid-range game is not lost after all, <laughs> as it's a two-point lead for the Lions. As Monroe with another tough shot, and he knocks it down. That's five points in a row, and uh-oh, he's hot. Constant movement creates the easy opportunity. As he hits a... Another big mid-range. Williams trying to respond. No, he could not. Viola with the rebound. Here come the Crusaders. And the sophomore Morsick with the block out of Bora and then a turnover. Yeah, great hands by Williams leading to this break and a tough layup that is no good. And another rebound. Get your own miss. And he gets another rebound. Floor is now being everybody flying on it. It's a jump ball. Great hustle by both teams, but you got to finish it with a rebound on defense. Third time 
isn't necessarily a charm. And the held basketball will go to Reardon. As Martinez missed it, then gets his rebound, missed it, and then fights for a jump ball. Although he missed it, you're lucky because it could have been a foul, and you got to finish your defensive possessions. Most certainly. As Monroe has scored five points in a row for the Crusaders. And another tough floater, a rainbow floater. Skittles at the end of it, two points. And now momentum has shifted. Reardon now leads by two. Although there was a lot of barrier traffic there from Monroe, cool as a cucumber with the field goal. As Martinez getting blocked, a great defense. Second half, coaches always say those first three minutes are vital to set the tone and look at that floater. A lot of traffic in the paint, but Monroe not affected. As Monroe, seven consecutive points for the Crusaders. He has been very effective. And that ball will be out of bounds and go to Jay Serra. Our officials tonight, Mike Caps, Kevin Rose, and David Van doing a good job. Not easy to officiate, and with these officials too, they're not used to officiating with such big players, so it's always adjustment, not only for the players, the coaches, but also the officials. Yeah, and I've worked with Kevin Rose before. He's an excellent official. Every time he calls a foul and I look at him for an answer, he always has an answer, and it's nice when an official can consistently tell you why he called what he called compared to saying, hey, I have a whistle, I'm just going to call it. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it also, it's how you ask that question. And when you respond with anger and passion directed the wrong way, officials are going to have you do it with calmness and a fair question. They're going to answer that question. They're going to move on. Yeah, I And totally it's very agree. healthy. Yeah, it is. As Bora down low, it's a battle down there. They want three in the key, and they will get it. Well, if you're going to camp at KOA, you got to pay a fee, and Bora didn't, and it's a turnover. <laughs> Good defense of Reardon, just playing vertical. Yeah, They're he, not reaching here. They're playing on the ground, on the floor, and get the three-second call. Yeah, Morsik moving his feet real well. As Bora is a tough cover, and they're going to possibly try and trap the pick and roll. Great defense. Nope. Here come the Lions. Monroe thought since so many J. Sarah jerseys were in his face that the basket wasn't guarded, but it was. And then Jelani Clark with the Wilson burger. Yeah. Served back hot here. <laughs> yeah, it was. His Bowman shot was blocked. If you're going to shoot it, you got to be ready immediately. Clark with great defense. As the Lions, they're trying to pound it inside. That hook is short. Morsik with the rebound. And those Crusaders, get your track shoes on. Here they come. As Monroe, that is a deep three and very short. It just trimmed the rim. And here come the Lions again, pushing the tempo. Bowman, there you go. The pump fake and the three, it's good. That pump fake is one of the best moves in basketball. It's the only time that Lion is okay is on the athletic field or court. And that time, the deception, the i.e. the lie, and Bowman hits the three. As we see the replay, the fundamentals fly by. And hey, after that, you already know the result. You're watching the 2019 NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV, presented by Recruiting Boost. So here we go off the timeout, 39-38, Jay Sarah 
and back and forth ball game. And we'll looking forward to our next game. Clovis West, this versus Windward of Los Angeles. We've got a lot of game left here, Anthony. Yeah, we do, as both teams now going back and forth. Jay Sarah leading by a point. And Monroe trying to scuffle through, but that no foul. They want to travel. Wilkinson, Coach Wilkinson, not too pleased. But the shot clock is now under 15 seconds. Clark, a three in the corner, long. Rebound Viola, and they will look to reset as those second chance points could hurt this team, especially in a close game. Clark with a hard drive and then switches to the right hand and gets a layup. I knew exactly what Jelani was going to do. He was out of the three-point arc, but I knew as soon as he's going to get the basketball because the defense was not balanced that time, and he took advantage with the drive. As Williams with the hard drive. They're trying to work him on the elbow with the undersized guard in Monroe, and it worked. There's a foul, and he'll be rewarded with two free throws. Coach Curtin talking to Monroe take away his right hand. That was the goal. That's what they talked about. And that time he didn't. He reached in. He's called for the foul. And we've got free throws. As the first free throw knocked down and Bora now checking into the game for Jay Serra replacing Berzel. So one man over seven foot replacing another who's six seven. Either way, the height is there for both of these teams as we're knotted up at 40 and the second free throw is good and Jay Sarah now has the lead. A game that's been going back and forth with about three minutes to go in the third quarter. And although these teams have good big men, the guards have been controlling the basketball a lot and there's another turnover. Bauman hit the clutch three after the deceptive fake line, if you will comes back, plays good defense, and creates another turnover, forces another turnover for Reardon. As Martinez trying to see if he can get going. He had a great first half, and that three is long. Rebound, Lott. You can tell the size plays a big fit. There's Lott wide open underneath. He tried to whip it over on the other side, but great defense by the Crusaders. They got lucky. They dodged the bullet. That When you get the basketball, and you throw it to a teammate, you have to consider your audience or the recipient of the pass. There's no way the way the ball was thrown, the ball is going to make the, and he's a very, very good athlete. you got to work and make a correct pass right there because it was set up for a basket. And that three in the corner is no good. And a tough rebound and put back for the Crusaders and Morsick. What a tough finish. Sophomore doing some good things to keep his team and then get the lead here in the with point paints. And although paint points, I'm sorry. No, it's a paint point. That's big. You might see him more here. Bora clanging, and banging and down low. Look at the soft touch. That's like a pillow kissing the rim. It's gonna go in. What a great hook. Second left-handed jump hook for Bora. Yeah, Monroe thought about it. Now he's gonna let it fly and it finds the basket. And now the offense has picked up tremendously. First half was defense, now it seems to be offense. And Steve Reardon turns up the heat defensively here as we close out, getting ready, 90 seconds left here in the third quarter. Yeah, Lott and Bora, great defense reaching over Morsick. And you can, Bora, look at that up and under, and he's fouled, got him in the air. And, well, he pointed to his head earlier, and I see why, mentally, he knows how to get those other big men in the air. The the, the biggest thing for a young big man to learn, and I know as a senior, still young, is patience with the ball. And that is a great example of having patience with the basketball. Not too slow, not too fast. Get the foul, you're up to the charity strike. Yes, he will be shooting two free throw. There are a good number of college coaches in attendance, just to name a couple. You see Cal, you see Utah, some Pac-12 foes. Saw Washington State earlier, Nevada's here. Um, all sorts of coaches. And that's the beauty of the NorCal Tip-Off Classic and why we were so excited to be the streaming home of the NorCal Tip-Off Classic. 
Yeah, of course, and there is a foul, and it could have been a violation, which will allow Bohr to shoot another free throw. Yes, it's on Morsik. Those are little boo-boos you cannot have. That can cost you at the end of the game. Yep, and you give a, and then you give him another chance to practice a free throw, and he misses. Yeah, well, it didn't hurt him. Fortunately for them, here come the Crusaders. Clark and Monroe have been running the show on offense in terms of the guards. And here he is, a tough drive, and that is a tough shot. No good. Rebound Martinez and Jay Serra. They're running. The Euro step. No. Coming up, Williams, and that is no good. Bora with the tough rebound. Look at him chin the basketball and then finish. That's a tough big man finish, and we're knotted up at 45. Keep Jay Serra Biggs off the glass. One shot, two shot, three shot, four. Eventually, one's going to fall, Anthony. Yeah, and it did. There's a corner three-pointer. The second three in the corner missed by Rennie. And a tough rebound and finish. There's another shoulder shrug. And that's just that weight room right there. He used every bit of it. Clark in the right position to get that second chance opportunity. And yeah, then draws, gets his, the defenders up and takes advantage. Yeah, getting the big fellas in the air and using his body to get fouled. That's why he's a Division I basketball player. As he has an opportunity to extend their lead to three. And it's very short. It goes through Lott's hands, but he secured it. So we're just under 30 seconds in the third quarter, 47-45. Reardon. Shot clocks is off. So we'll see what kind of possession Jay Sarah gets here to close the third quarter. Yeah, as in the corner, you have Bowman, a good three point shooter on that left side that could try to utilize him. Lot with the ball, and Williams under five now. Martinez, a three pointer right down the middle, no good. Rebound Crusaders, and that will be the end of the third quarter. 47-45, Reardon lead the Lions by two. We're in for a great finish. You're watching the 2019 NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV, presented by Recruiting Boost. Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches through calls, texts, and social media. Contact us today. The Maher Law Group, a professional law corporation. Straight Sports, custom uniforms. Go to straightsports.com for more. Fit Pro Go, most delicious shake ever. American Asphalt, taking care of business in the Bay Area for over 35 years. Reardon with the lead, 47-45. Yeah, two-point game, been going back and forth, Martinez is fouled by Morsik. That is just not a smart foul when you, you know you're valuable for your team. That could hurt him. And when you're that big, there's nowhere to hide. <laughs> yeah, the refs, yeah, they'll find you. He very easily is. The ball will be inbounded by Martinez. Both offenses have fired up in the second half, but both defenses have always been there, and there's a low bounce pass, and it's a turnover. Here comes Clark with the crafty finish. And now the Crusaders extend their lead to four. Bell got caught up in the air and was indecisive. And in athletics, when you're indecisive, bad things happen. Yeah, that's saying the least. A lot can happen when you're hanging. As Bowman with the basketball. He didn't know if he wanted to shoot it or pass it to a teammate and got caught in between. A great backdoor cut that was sent where it came from by Morsik. Monroe fouled as he drove hard with the left hand, but that block started that offensive possession. What's on the menu 
It's not on anyone's menu, and it's the Wilson Burger, and here is an example. It's got a salty, leathery taste, and you can't find it on anybody's menu. <laughs> As we do have. This I broadcast of the NorCal Tip-Off Classic is brought to you in part by Recruiting Boost, Athletic College Placement Service. The NCS TV Summer Basketball Camp. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com slash camp to learn more and get your $100 discount off camp tuition. Silicon Valley Sports, S-V-S Sports, LLC.com for more information. Practice timing created by coaches for coaches. The Maher Law Group, a professional law corporation. Need an aggressive and persuasive criminal defense attorney in Contra Costa, Solano, or Napa County? Contact Vincent R. Maher, attorney at law. You can benefit from the dedicated advocacy of an attorney who's one of the rare criminal trial lawyers in the state to be a specialist certified by the California State Bar. Contact him at 707-427-2800. 707-427-2800. Vincent R. Maher at the Maher Law Group, a professional corporation. Welcome back. Newark Memorial High School in Newark, California. A little bit of a cloudy day, but that's why basketball is played indoors as Monroe will be at the free throw line shooting two. He knocks down the first one in the fourth quarter. 7.19 to go. It's 50 to 45. The Crusaders lead. I'm Anthony Silva. And Chris, this game's been back and forth. It's been very entertaining. And Reardon is putting the foot on the gas. And they've got to continue to play good defense. And when they play good defense, they've been consistently awarded Good shots offensively, and here's another example. As we see Wilson with the great hands on defense and also preventing the ball from going out of bounds. Great decision by Jelani Clark. They didn't have the number, so he kicked it out to his teammate, Monroe, and then he gets the ball back and misses the 17-footer. Like yeah. to see, a, keep with the patience. You had that thought and build that, try to build an eight-point lead. Yeah, that was a tough mid-range jumper. Lot will swing it around, and look at that. That cross screen, Bora had to come up with that basketball. You could tell he was upset. He was trying to go somewhere without one key thing, is the Wilson basketball, and he left it behind, and it's a turnover. And look at that up and under, over the trees, or under him, I should say, as he makes a tough layup, Monroe. Eight-point lead for the Crusaders. 53-45, yes, they now have an eight-point lead. There's energy in the arena and a tough drive and finish by Williams to cut the deficit to six. The senior point guard answers when the Lions needed him the most. Yeah, Monroe has been cooking, and let's see what else is on the menu as he could want a ball screen here by Rennie. Try to slip it. And a great tip on defense. That's a very dangerous pass. And, and great anticipation. As and we see, look at that, right under the trees. And we talked about it several times. That's the benefit of playing and practicing against bigger players. You have no fear going against bigger players because you practice every single day against them. Yeah, that's one thing when he goes to the next level, it seems he has a good indication and feel for that, as you said, knowing when to go up and under and seize contact. And here he is driving again. Tough floater, no. Morsick with the tip in. And there's an offensive foul on Morsick trying to get the rebound. They're going to say he pushed. Tough call. He is not happy with that. Well, we've said it a couple of times when you're that big. You're not going to get away with a push. Yeah, a six-two, six-three guy can get kind of, you know, kind of float into the mesh. And here Wilson with another steal. He jumped the same pass he did earlier, but then smokes the layup and a tough battle underneath. And there is a foul. So there's a frustration foul. Reardon gets the steal. They don't have the numbers. Probably could have made a better decision there in trying to set up the offense. I get it, they go attack mode, but then they compound the missed shot by reaching in and committing the foul. Yeah, as Wilson jumped that lane, 
two times and has been rewarded with two steals. So you may want to watch the back door in the next possession. But, but I like how Jay, both these teams have really adjusted to the officiating in the second half. Four underneath, great defense over there on the side of Reardon. Not getting in there and saving an easy layup. Rennie Rennie got his hand in the passing lane, and that's just not any hand. That's a 6-9 hand reaching back after covering the wing and then coming and protecting the basket. Well, Chris, check this out. Now they're in a 2-3 zone, and this is late in the game. This can throw off your rhythm. You like to have that in your pocket as a coach to make these, make these changes defensively when the team and keep them gussing, keep them out of the flow. Defense is not always about getting stops and turnovers. It's keeping the offense hesitating. And when you get somebody to hesitate, you're going to win a lot of the time. So you get them thinking, they throw a little zone at them, and a brilliant move by Coach Curtin. As Jasper Lott checking into the game. Guarded tightly is Viola. And now they'll get a possibly some type of movement and fluidity as they need it. They need scoring down by six. Clark dribbling around, cannot find much, and now guarded by Bora. Oh, a great spin move, scoop with the left hand, no good, Bora with the rebound, here come the Lions. And there hands is with a the hand, uh, defense foul. with the hands. And Lott got slapped in the face by Viola, but he said it was an accident. He said sorry, Lott wasn't too happy with that. And it was completely unintentional. Doesn't move his feet, hand check, called. Oh, yeah, and right there. And it'll be free throws. Yeah, they did shake hands, too, after that. But Justin Williams at the free throw line, extremely quick point guard, but misses the front end of the one and one. Yeah, that one and one, you got to make those first ones. And now they have an opportunity. Just over four minutes to go, 53-47. Reardon leads by six. And I'm not going to stall here and work clock. I'm going to get into great shot mode with this lead. And the last couple of times haven't been impressed by Reardon's oh, shots, but that one's pretty up. high percentage. Yeah, <laughs> buckle up for that as... The flight has landed. Clark with the dunk, and that's a big one. Now their lead has been extended to eight with just under four minutes to go. Those crucial turnovers at crucial times. Martinez trying to get involved. No good. Once again, fighting for his own rebound. And when he misses, he's around the basket. He's got three offensive rebounds just off of his own misses. As here's Clark. Look at that flight. Now, you've got Coach Curtin talking to Bryce Monroe and his, his two senior guards and working through situations. Let's really, really possess the basketball. Doesn't mean you stall, doesn't mean you go into four corners and think. You look and look for great shots. And we've got a timeout on the floor, full timeout. You're watching the 2019 NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV, presented by Recruiting Boost. Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities we don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches through calls, texts, and social media. Contact us today. Mark of the third quarter, Monroe tied it up. So we're eight-point lead for Reardon, but we were just talking about this game, Monroe tied it up with a layup. It was 34-all, seven-minute mark of the third quarter, and since Reardon has really really turned up the heat and put themselves in a great position to win this game. A lot of time left as Martinez is at the free throw line. Yeah, as, as you said, it was, so in that sequence, it was 21-13, they're plus eight, as Reardon doing a great job 
As we see Martinez making that free throw lead is now cut to seven for Reardon. And Jay Sarah will turn up the heat defensively. And wow, a big time save. And due to that save, oh, Viola smoked the layup, but gets it right back and scores and saying, hey, calm down. But if you're Jay Sarah, you got to get that rebound. Only thing they blew was Morsick getting a, an assist. I love the pass, but Viola staying with it and having a can do attitude. Yeah, and now look at the communication. They're in a 2 3 zone. This is, you got to hit outside shots, and that one's going to be very long. Great rebound underneath. Dominic Wilson, a 6 4 senior, played like a seven footer on that defensive position, possession, and getting in in the paint and blocking out. Yeah, getting in. That was over a seven footer, but now they're milking the clock as we see Monroe with the ball picked up his dribble. And Morsick saved a turnover, and no good on the righty hook. That's a three by Bowman, and Big he swing. nails it. Big swing right there. We're going to have a chance to go up double figures, and boom. Bowman with the second three of the game and makes it a six-point game. Yeah, crucial three in the fourth quarter with just over 2.39 to go, 57-51. Fifty-one, Reardon. You're watching the 2019 NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV, presented by Recruiting Boast. You thought I was playing? Huh. As welcome back here in Newark Memorial High School. 57-51, Reardon leads by six, but Bowman hit a big three-pointer in the right corner as they were down by nine before that three. And catch and shoot, you could tell that's his job as we'll see the Crusaders inbound the ball. But Reardon trying to get their first win of the year and start the year 1-0 and as Jay Sarah Trying to avoid who, a one and two start. Who has fouls to give? They've only committed three fouls in the second half. Yeah, Jay Sarah. Yeah, they've been playing defense without fouling. So that's something to be noted later in this game with uh, just above two minutes. Viola, three. You're shaking your head. You don't agree with that shot. I don't like that look. But second chance opportunities, and they'll get a fresh shot clock to work more time. Monroe with a tough shot. Morsick with another rebound and finishes. Completely okay with that. You get the put back and you build your lead back up to eight. And he's been a couple of times today getting a hand in the passing lane, doing new, uh, good things, sharing the basketball and watching the sophomore get better. And then we get the turnover. Yes, there's an offensive foul by Bora with the illegal screen, which they've been calling all day. Coach Wilkinson for Jay Sarah saying, hey, we're all right. Let's calm down. Strong rebound in the, again, young big men. Do you get the rebound and bring it back down to low man's land, or do you keep it up high where only a big guy could touch it, and then you finish? And that was a good example. Morse staying strong and keeping the ball up high where only he could touch the basketball. Yeah, that was a deep pass to beat the press, but it worked as Viola with the ball, and yep, they're milking the clock. Just under 1.30 to go. I mean, worst case scenario here, you get a shot clock violation. You don't want a live ball turnover. As the shot clock is at 10, and there is a foul, a hip check on Williams. He's pounding his shorts. He's not happy with the call because the shot clock resets. And they still have two more fouls to give. Yeah, that's a frustrating foul because they can milk another 35 seconds and this game would be under a minute. Trapping the corners and they're saying a tip that stays with the Crusaders. That is a tough call. I wow. know Coach Curtin has got a brand new baby at home, but that one will put years on your life and a but it was a break for Reardon. They maintained possession, almost a near turnover. And they're looking for, they're going to call a timeout. Yeah, Clark with the timeout, trying to reset with 118 to go, 59-51. Reardon leads by eight. 
You're watching the 2019 NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV presented by Recruiting Boost. Practice timing created by coaches for coaches. Practice timing.com. As we'll see what teams can adjust and how they can work, as we still have a lot of games to go, as we see the other teams awaiting right outside the court. 59 51 Reardon, and they're trapping right by half court. It's like having three defenders if you think about the half court line. And somehow that pass finds Monroe. And there's a quick foul. That three will not count. Still have another foul to give. But a lot of close calls for Reardon in coming down on this possession. Yeah, as he just heaved that pass and went through a defender and found Monroe. Sometimes the ball happily just goes you, to you and it finds your way. And there was three keys of victory for Archbishop Reardon coming into this game. Keep J. Sarah Biggs off the glass, limit the turnovers, and one they really done a good job with, slow down Martinez. Yeah, as Archbishop Reardon calling a timeout as Morsick almost traveled. It's 107 to go, 59-51 Reardon. Our next game coming up, Clovis West versus Windward of Los Angeles. That will be game number five in the NorCal Tip-Off Classic. Follow us on social media at NorCal Sports TV. While this game is going on, we're posting replays and highlights on Twitter. So on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at NorCal Sports TV, and where you're watching this game, just do this for us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're not going to charge you anything. All we are going to do is send you alerts when we have upcoming games. And that is YouTube.com slash NorCalSports TV. It's very easy. We have a lot of games up coming up for the rest of this year and then our basketball season in 2020. And very easy, and, and we're able to bring you these games because of our great partners who are helping us bring you this great NorCal Tip-Off Classic. Yes, it is a great NorCal Tip-Off Classic, the 13th annual one, as it's 59-51. The Crusaders inbound the basketball, and we are now approaching one minute to go in the fourth quarter. Oh, almost a carry there, and another dangerous pass, and makes you clench a little bit as now they're trapping the corners. And they're gonna call backcourt violation. Monroe stepped on the line. He seems shocked as he's asking what line was stepped on. Well, you have three near misses on potential passes. Yeah, he stepped on the line, good yeah, call. It was a Mike good call. Mike Caps was all over that. Yeah, as Monroe not happy, he was shocked as if you know, he got caught for a crime he didn't do. Martinez, tough drive, he's fouled. Morsick gets called for the foul again. And he got a side of elbow from Martinez. But you're saying here, don't foul. And then you give, and then you commit the foul. And you stop the clock and give your opponent to score with the clock stopped. As Martinez makes the first free throw. It's only a seven point game as we get substitutions. Bora checking out for the Lions and Burzell checking in. And that could be because he could be a possibly a better three point shooter. But it's a seven point game. 59 52. Reardon is a crucial free throw. So can anyway. set up your defense, try to get the steal, and then commit the foul. Clark running the baseline. They're going to trap immediately. Clark gets it over. And look at the heave to Morsick. And it's blocked 
and no, it's a foul. What a defensive effort by Martinez. That was almost a sports center top 10 until we got called for the foul. Up, up, and almost denied. Watch 22 get off the floor. Wow, he took the elevator. Look, look. Wow, look That's how a high. good vertical leap. Wow. That's like me jumping up for a chocolate cake with passion. Wow, Martinez with great springs, but called for the foul. Yeah, Morsick will be shooting too. And they, I, to be honest with you, as good as that chocolate cake may be, I don't even think I could get that high. Is we're trying to Bryce Monroe trying to trying to get into the huddle and having a little gamesmanship, having a little bit of fun, and Martinez. Wow, he got off the floor. Wow, I mean, that was crazy. Did you see? Wow. He I went. know he was called for a foul, but that's as good as play as we've seen all day long, and we've seen a lot of good plays. Yeah, they show highlights back in the day of when players are, think they got free layups, and in the NBA they hustle, and LeBron does it, Kobe. But that was an excellent hustle play. And mind you, college coaches, they see that. They have to see that. As Morsick knocks down the first free throw. I think a part of us did not want that foul to be called because <laughs> that was a great play. Great, a, great play, great effort. And that's one thing. This is a tip. Some of these teams have already had games. But the one thing for the most part, we've seen great effort. And that's where it all starts. And then you match, you mix it with the talent that Martinez and, some of these, and a lot of these players have. That's a great skill set. As we do see more teams piling in for the future games as Jay Serrell, they only have 42 seconds to go, and now the clock's ticking. Martinez, oh, a tough three-pointer. Look to be get him on the elbow. Monroe, no call. But, yes, I think he got him on the elbow. If we could see a replay, it would probably do justice. But it's still a tough shot nonetheless. Look at the Martinez right to the line. And, oh, close call. So Coach Wilkinson went from critiquing the official back to coach in a matter of seconds and gets the quick timeout so they can set up their defense. It's a five-point game, and you've got a lot of time left. Now everybody's in. It's a foul's going to be free throws, but no quit in the J. Sarah Lions. So if you're Coach Wilkinson, what are you telling your players in the huddles? There's only 35 seconds to go. First thing you're telling them is we want to go for the steal. If you don't get the steal, quick foul. And then think and guard out, block out to get the rebound and get up the court. But the first thing is, is the effort and they're going to defend the ball and Reardon can run the baseline, and you know they're gonna they're gonna who they're gonna get try to get the basketball to. As six seven Burzell will be guarding the inbounder, so that's gonna be a tough inbound. Hubbard can run the baseline and open up space for him if he needs to. Yeah, Hubbard already moving, and he throws a turnover. There was no one in the vicinity, and what a crucial turnover! And Monroe talking to him, not happy. And sometimes when you do all those cuts, you fake out your own player. Is wow. Throwing it to nobody. And great defense by Jay Sarah of cutting off all alleys. I might want to have Clark or Monroe inbound that basketball if I'm going to rethink that. Hubbard didn't seem really confident, the 6'1 junior, from the time he got the ball into his hand. Yeah, that's crunch time. You got to be careful who's inbounding the ball because turnovers like this happen. Is it 61 56? Reardon up by five with about 35 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. As the PA announcer just telling everyone the shot clock is off. But now he says no, he's adding it. So now the shot clock's turned back on. There's 35 seconds remaining. It's just about the same. Oh, almost a turnover. Bowman catching fire. Short. Clark rebound, and now they're just going to sprint it up the floor. Monroe, oh, wow, he's taking a shot, and he misses the layup. A questionable shot there by Monroe, and you're holding your head. Like I don't know if that was a great shot. Well, 
learning from the past, then you have to protect the basketball. Love is energy and passion. But I don't think that was what Coach Curtin wanted. But he's got one of your best players going to the basket. How bad it can be. It helps if you make that move and then you make both free throws. And it's hard as a coach to go, you know what? No, no, no. But you miss the free throw. Oh, well, now. So now there's a point of coaching through that in the future. The clock is your enemy right there. It's not Jay Sarah. And and he you split the free throws. Yeah, bounces in that one. It's a six-point game. Martinez may try to do a quick pull-up three again. And you know he's going to shoot it, and he knocks it down again. Martinez is cooking for Jay Serra. What a big three-pointer. He does have some ice in his veins, as it is now a three-point game. And I like how Coach Wilkinson, Martinez, has been pretty quiet, except here in the fourth quarter with the big, wasn't a block shot, was called for the foul, but he's hit two big threes to put him make this a one possession game but when you you see so often as coaches overuse their timeouts earlier in the early in the game he's been able to call timeout after timeout after made basket to create situations to extend this game and that's all you want to do and when you extend the game and you got great players every once in a while you might steal one yeah as now it's cut to three points, and these just aren't threes that are run within the offense. Martinez just came up the court like you're playing NBA 2K and pulled up a three-pointer and nailed both of them, and now it's a three-point game. But if you're the Crusaders, what are you telling them now? I mean, this is a big cut. The lead slashed. Who's going to inbound here? Yeah, that's one thing that should be talked about first. You said Hubbard was a little antsy when he inbounded it, and look, he's walking towards underneath, does and he'll he, be inbounded. Does he learn? Does he learn from the past mistake? He can run this baseline to create an opening for himself. Yeah, now he throws it in with no problem, and Viola with the basketball fires it over to Monroe, and Monroe smartly shot the three-pointer. He tried to get <laughs> away with it, kind of like a Chris Paul attempt. But they're going to say one and one. So there's 10 seconds remaining in this game, and Rowe will be at the I line. I love great players have gamesmanship. And there's an example. Didn't get three free throws, but he tried. Hey, he did try. and That's now, all you can ask. Yeah, the one and one. He makes the front end and will now have an opportunity to extend the lead to five. But, yeah, you're right. He tried to get the three, but, of course, the refs, They've been around, and they know that, hey, we're not falling for that. And now it's just one free throw no matter what. 63-59 with 10 seconds remaining. And he nails both. And now it's Williams' turn, pushing with just under seven seconds. Looking to pass. Martinez. Don't foul if you're Reardon. Martinez, ooh, short on the three-pointer and a foul. And that should do it with .5 seconds to go. Reardon will come out with a huge win. So, written in my notes, unfinished business for Reardon. Can you learn from last season's close losses? The answer so far is yes. Yeah, they had great clock management at the end. Some scary passes, though, that made you kind of like, oh, what's going to happen? But... As you said, when you win, it's like you can learn from it in a positive way because you won the game. There's nothing better as a coach or a player to learn from winning, to learn and win all in the same time. And Reardon with the big victory, 64-59. Yeah, the Arch Archbishop Reardon gets the big time W and go to 1-0 and on the season. As they do win, 64-59, Jay Sarah will fall to 1-2 and two as they've lost two consecutive games. You're watching the 2019 NorCal Tip-Off Classic on NorCal Sports TV, presented by our new partner, Recruiting Boost. 
Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches through calls, texts, and social media. Contact us today. Yeah, because I don't know if that who the fifth starter. Okay. So Reardon with the 64-59 victory over Jay Sarah. And Reardon off to a good start. He's going to Sam Houston State. Bryce Monroe. Congratulations. Great job, man. Keep in the district picture. So Bryce Monroe is our recruiting boost player of the game. Big victory for the Crusaders. And we'll have an interview All right, Bryce, quick with interview. Bryce. I'm going to wait for him to give me a second. And we'll go down to the floor for an interview with our recruiting, I'm here with boost, the player recruiting of the game. boost player of the game, Bryce Monroe from Archbishop Riordan. Bryce, what a battle that was out there. You guys were down at the half, but shoot or shoot, and that's exactly what you did. You ended the game with 33 points. What can you say about your performance today? Uh, I would like to say it was my teammates. They trusted in me and told me I have time to keep shooting and keep going. And I just trusted them, and I believed in myself and all the work I put in this offseason. And what's impressive isn't just your shooting, but your ability to make those shots under pressure in clutch moments. What goes through your head in those moments? How do you keep your composure? Uh, just like being tr trusting my craft, honestly. Just going back to those days in the gym when I'm by myself working out with nobody around, just trusting it and just keeping allowing myself to shoot the ball regardless of makes or miss. And one thing I noticed about your team as a whole is how vocal you guys are on the court. So tell me how communication contributes to the game. I mean, if somebody's lacking, if somebody needs help, we always there to have our brothers back. Our thing is strength, strength and brotherhood. So I think that's all it is, is trusting our brothers and having strength. Thanks for your time. You. Back to you, Chris. Thank you. From Newark Memorial High School, where Reardon beat Jay Sarah 64-59 to win this NorCal tip-off matchup. You have been watching NorCal Sports TV Thanks to our crew, Jason Green, Ryan Castaneda, Sean Wilkerson, Jason Brown, Rihanna Dizon, Anthony Silva, Anthony Silva, and our director, Dion I. I'm Chris Babcock here in Newark. Good night, and thanks for being on the show. Did they say 30?